Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. My name is Emmanuel Olega and I'm a math teacher and a software engineer. So today I'll be introducing a new topic and today's topic is only the topic of differentiation. So before we start off this topic, I said to have a background of trigonometry. At least trigonometry should be the new background before we start on today's topic because there'll be there'll actually be a lot of knowledge requirement in that and probably also if you have a knowledge of logarithms and exponential functions as a background it may also be useful in today's video all right let's introduce differentiation now there'll be a lot of examples from uneb and everywhere across and i believe this will be helpful for you as you prepare for uneb exams especially if you're an a-level student pursuing pure mathematics all right let's learn something new all right so today's topic differentiation and this is where we are today so we're going to begin with this and we're going to move on and build up on this so this is the calculus section of pure mathematics in your a-level math all right let's learn something all right let's begin and introduce differentiation and get to understand what it is so differentiation is the act of obtaining the derivative of a function differentiation deals with changing quantity changing quantities and one of the changing quantities is the gradient of a curve so this is basically dealing with changing quantities and now there are different terms that we're going to get used to but this is going to be the most important one so there's that term dy dx so what is dy dx so this is a rate of change and not a fraction the process of finding dy dx is known as differentiation to differentiate a single term you multiply the index of the given variable by the same variable with its index reduced by one all right so let's look at an example here so now we have our x value here so we have if y is equal to x so x is the variable we're looking at and then its index is n so therefore dy dx shall be equal to n times x uh, and then the the variable i mean the index at the top will be subtracted by one so that's why we have it's n minus one so as you can see you multiply the index of the given variable on the same variable with its index reduced by one and that's what we have and then another of representing dy dx it can also be represented as f prime x so it also means a change in x so that's basically it so we're going to subtract a one from the index and then we're going to multiply the index on the variable all right so something to note if y is equal to k is a constant so that means for example if you have y for example being equal to two to three or to any random number whether it's a fraction especially those that are constants and they are not uh they are different from x values in that case so there we're saying dy dx shall be equal to zero all right let's look at some questions that will help us understand this even much better so we're being asked to differentiate the following so these are nine different uh, questions that we're going to try to work on so the first one is five to the power x power four so what are we going to do so now we're going to let y to be equal to five x power four so therefore dy dx shall be as you can see we now have the so this is our index right here so we're going to multiply the index on the side of the variable x so that's why we have four times five and then we're going to subtract the index by one and that's why we end up with 20 x cubed as simple as that that's how we find the dy dx all right so how about if we have six over x squared all right so for this we're going to let y to be equal to six over x squared and then we're going to bring the x to the top you know that, uh, 1 over x squared is the same as x to the power negative 2 so this is actually a similar way of representing that so now to differentiate this we're going to multiply that index to the variable so that's why we end up with negative 2 times 6 and then we're going to subtract a minus 1 from the index and that's why we have negative 2 minus 1 of course negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3 so we end up with a negative 12 x to the power negative 3 and that's dy dx how about the next one now we have a 2 times uh, then we have a root of x cubed so how do we work with this so we're going to represent this differently we're going to change that root so we know that a root alone like that represents the power a half so that's how we end up having we're going to change that and it's going to be 2x into we already see that x has a power which is a 3 because it's a tube root so we have that three times a half which is this is equal to three over two so that's another way of representing that 
So now dy dx shall be, so now we have the index, the index is 3 over 2, so now we have the 3 over 2 multiplying the 2, so we have 3 over 2 times 2, and then we're going to subtract a 1 from the 3 over 2, and then we are left with, so we're going to have 3x, because here we can see that the 2s cancel, and remain with the 3, and then 3 over 2 minus 1 shall be equal to 0 0.5, which is equal to a half, so that's how we have 3x power a half, which can again be represented as 3 root x because that root represents power a half all right let's move on to the next one so now we have x cubed plus 2x squared plus 3x so how do we work with this so we're going to let y to be equal to the following now we can deal with them one by one so when it comes to this you can actually see, so we're going to have three times one so we're going to assume that there is actually uh we're going to assume that there's actually a coefficient of 1 right here, 1 times x cubed. So that's why we have 3 times whatever coefficient is there. So basically that's going to be 1, 3 times 1. And then we're going to have a 3 minus 1 at the top. So that's why we end up with what uh, 3 into x squared. And then right here, we're going to have... So right here we're going to have... Uh, so we're going to have 2 times 2. And then we're going to subtract a 1 from here. So that's why we're left with 4x because 2 times 2 is 4. And then right here, we can actually see that we're going to assume that uh, at the top here, so this is actually to the power 1. So x, when there is actually no power shown, that basically means it's actually to the power 1. So when you subtract a 1 from that 1, we are left with 0. And we know that x power 0 is 1. And then we're going to multiply that 1 to this 3. Of course, 3 times 1 is 3. So we are left with a 3 as basically as that because x power 0 is a 1 so 1 times 3 is 3 so we're only left with a 3 and that's our answer for dy dx all right let's move on to number 5 so we have 4x power 4 minus 3x squared plus 5 so now we have a constant in this case the constant 5 and we know that when you differentiate constants the constants become 0 so now we can see that we'll end up with so we we'll end up with this so we end up having 16x cubed minus 6x so right here uh, when you look at the constant here so it's basically assuming because we don't see any x value it's basically assuming that we have an x to the power 0 which is as basically the same as a 1 so this is basically 5 times 1 and we not when we have a x power 0 so it's like uh, so when we differentiate that we have a 0 minus 1 which is obviously negative 1 and then we're going to have that 0 multiplying the 5, so that's why we'll end up with something like that. But 0 times 5 is 0, so we're still left with no value on this side, so this is just basically a 0. So at the end, we're left with 16x cubed minus 6x as our final answer. Alright, now how about when we have ax squared plus bx plus c? So now the difference here is we're representing our coefficients by different letters but definitely these coefficients are also constants so now we're going to treat them the way we treat constants so basically we can actually see that we're going to have this 2 multiplying the a and then we're going to have a 2 minus 1 so at the end we are left with 2a into x uh, into x actually because uh, x power 1 is just x then right here we can actually see that we're going to have 1 minus 1 of course we'll be left with x being to the power 0 but 1 times b is b so we're going to be left with a b and then right here now c is a constant without an x so we're going to assume that the x is actually to the power zero which when we have that zero times c it's actually zero so we are left with two ax plus b as our final answer and then if we move on to question number seven we have 15x to the power 100 minus 3x to the power 12 plus 5x minus 46 so we're going to treat them the same way and then we'll be left with 1500x to the power 99 minus 36x to the power 11 plus 5. By basically, I think you get the concept of what's actually happening here. So it's just a repetition of the same steps. Now, how about in question number 8? Now, this is a unique kind of example because we actually have a fraction. So the x is actually in the denominator. So we're going to bring the x to the top as our solution to simplify that. So that's why we're going to have x to the power negative 3 over 2 and then the 2 will actually remain down and then when we differentiate that we'll actually have a negative 3 over 2 times a half into x uh, to the power negative 3 over 2 minus 1 so we end up having negative 3 over 4 to the uh, with x 
the power negative 5 over 2. And then we're going to take the x back down. And then it's going to be, so this negative will go and it will become a positive when we take it back down. So we'll be left with a negative 3 over 4x power 5 over 2. And then we know that uh, the power a half can be represented as a root. So we're left with 4 root x to the power 5 as our final answer. And that's the basic best way of simplifying that. And then when we move on to question number 9, it's 8z cubed minus 1 over 3z power 5 plus z minus 3. So in this case, we've actually seen we are using a z, a z or a z instead of an x so now when you differentiate this so we're going to represent this as a dy dz so this is actually slightly different from the other so as you can see here we can take this z power 5 to the top and of course this power will change sign and to become z to the power negative 5 when you take it to the top and then when you differentiate that we end up having this so our dy dz so we changing this to dz because we are dealing with z as our variable so if when our variable is another letter we're going to change the letter at the at the at the denominator here so we're going to have a dy dz instead of a dy dx in this case but basically nothing much changes so it's actually the same process and we are left with 24z squared plus 5 over 3z to the power negative 6 plus 1 and then our final answer in the most simplified version, we're going to take this z to the power negative 6 back to the denominator and it will become uh, a positive a positive 6. So that's we're going to have a 3z to the power 6. And that's going to be our final answer. Thank you so much for watching this introduction to differentiation. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope the video really, really helped you. If it did, feel free to share the video with all your friends and help as many as you can. And then if you really like the video, feel free to give the video a like or a thumbs up. And then tell me in the comments if the video really helped you and I'll try to get time and reply to your comments. And then if you're new to this channel, I encourage you to join the community by subscribing. And then make sure to hit that notification bell so I get updated every single time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.